We are back with Michael Cohen, the former personal attorney for President Trump. He's also the author of the book Disloyal and the host of the Mea Culpa podcast. So, uh, Michael, your former boss, Donald Trump, is speaking out about this raid on Rudy Giuliani's apartment. Here's what he had to say this morning. Rudy Giuliani is a great patriot. He does these things. He just loves this country. And they raid his apartment. It's like... Uh, so unfair and such a double it's like a double standard like i don't think anybody's ever seen before it's very very unfair rudy is a patriot who loves this country and i don't know what they're looking for what they're doing so michael you know donald trump so well <laughs> that's what he's saying publicly what do you think um he's saying behind the scenes yeah oh boy uh you know, if he understood Yiddish, I would say Rudy's of Gachatitzuris. He's got some <laughs> real trouble coming uh, you know, down the pike. I can assure you on that one. But it's interesting how Donald turns around and says that nobody has ever seen anything like this before. Um, hello, Donald. You remember me? Like the guy whose name that you forgot while you were sitting at the table when they when you were complaining that they raided one of your lawyer's offices and home. Well, guess what? They did it to him again. And guess what? There's going to be a ton of stuff. I, I'm certain of it. There's going to be a ton of documentation and there's going to be a bunch of tweets and a bunch of text and a bunch of God knows what else that they ended up um, obtaining from these devices. Mm -hmm. And that hopefully we as the, you know, as the um, members of the, you know, of the country, you know, will have a chance to see them. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm certain that they're there. And rest assured, Donald is not happy about this. And do you think that Donald Trump is scared today? Oh, I know so. Uh, I mean, he was afraid even when they raided my home and my law office because Donald Trump cares about only one person. And I, I, I say it all the time. He cares about only himself. So he doesn't care that they raided Rudy's home. He doesn't care that they raided Rudy's law office. What is it going to do to affect me is all that he's thinking right now. What did stupid Rudy do? What did he stupid Rudy write? What sort of text messages or emails? What sort of stupid things was Rudy up to that's now going to implicate me? Because Donald knows he has enough trouble right now between Tish James and the attorney general's office, as well as Cy Vance and the district attorney's office mm -hmm. here in New York, forgetting about Georgia, forgetting about D.C. with the pick. Forgetting about all these other litigations. How about the dozens or so from women with assault cases? He knows that he has all sorts of legal issues. He didn't need more. That's one thing I can assure you. He definitely didn't need more. And Rudy is going to be, you know, a treasure trove. In all fairness, Merrick Garland is like, you know, Santa Claus. And Rudy's devices are going to be like the presents that are waiting for you on Christmas Day. Well, that's I what, that's ask the way you, I see uh, it. I want to ask you about that, about the Merrick Garland connection, because Andrew Giuliani, Rudy's son, has come out publicly and sort of railed against this raid and said that it's all, you know, a political witch hunt. It's all motivated um, by politics. What's your response to him? Well, actually, I think what Andrew said is that it's political thuggery, which I didn't see Andrew coming out and saying anything when it happened to me, nor did I see Rudy say anything when it happened to me. What is interesting is that the last time I saw Andrew, he was giving a golf lesson on one of Trump's properties. Now, all of a sudden, he too has become a spokesperson. I mean, it's almost comical that they put people in these positions. I understand Andrew's contemplating on running, you know, for a governor. It's it's another joke. And what do I think? I, I, I think Rudy knows that he has trouble. I think Donald understands that Rudy will provide whatever information that he has to the SDNY because Rudy has no interest in going to prison and spending the golden years of his life behind bars. That I'm certain of. You know, Michael, I also want to ask you, because I haven't talked to you since then, I want to acknowledge that you did predict what would happen if Donald Trump lost the election. And you told Congress, I mean, a congressional committee, that he would not leave peacefully. So I just want to remind everybody what you said back on February 27th, 2019. Given my experience working for Mr. Trump, I fear that if he loses the election in 2020, that there will never be a peaceful transition of power. 
And sadly, that came to pass with the insurrection on January 6th. I mean, that's, you know, you, you saw it coming. And so because you know this so well, um, do you think that President Trump has any intention of running for office again at this point? So the answer to that is no, he's not going to be running again. Uh, it's all a grift. It's also that he could continue to raise money off the backs of the ignorant who believe him and that continue to this day to listen to this racist, sexist, misogynistic, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, anti-Semite. That's the saddest part. And that there were 74 million people that voted for him. The question becomes why? Why he is the most flawed human being, right? And it's sad. It really is sad that people are still thinking that he could possibly run, that he would be the leader today if it would, in fact, that the Republicans had to pick and choose somebody. I truly don't understand it. But that's not the only thing I predicted. I also told Jim Jordan or Mark Meadows or one of these other clowns that was sitting there drilling me during that day. I said, listen, I know the playbook. And I know the playbook, the plays that you're trying to run on me right now, because I wrote the playbook. So what are you doing? I know that Donald Trump doesn't care about anyone or anything other than himself, and that he will throw anyone and everyone under the bus if and when the time comes. I warned Rudy on it. I warned it does. And look at all yeah. of the people, like whether it's Matt Gates or any of these other jokers that just sit there and they keep following Donald Trump thinking. And this is a big problem when you are associated or in Trump's orbit. You actually, for, for that moment, believe that you're invincible. You mm -hmm. sort of take on Trump's persona and think that you're Teflon Don. Well, guess what? You're not. Right. And, and it's being shown again and again and again. I mean, look, we're talking to you. You're on house arrest because of your relationship and what the yeah. choices you made for Donald Trump. And so what now today would you change? Oh, my God. What would I change? I would have certainly rejected the offer going back in 2007 to come work for him. Uh, I should have listened to my wife and my children who had begged me, you know, year after year after year to leave. I didn't need to work for him. Right. I was doing very well uh, without, you know, without working for Trump and why I allowed my moral compass to, you know, take a dumpster dive real south uh, working for him. I don't know. Maybe I was missing something in my life. There was a lot of excitement going on between The Apprentice, Miss Universe. I, I don't know. I stay up many, many nights thinking about, you know, how I would do things differently if I had a time machine. But rest assured. Home confinement, being locked up for 22 hours a day, even though it's in your own home, it's certainly a lot better than being in Otisville. That I promise you. Uh, but it's not easy.